When people seeking asylum arrive in Australia by boat, they are forcibly transferred to a third country to have their claims for protection processed there, under a policy known as offshore processing. It is punitive by design. The purpose of offshore processing is to put pressure on asylum seekers to go back to the dangers they fled, and to deter future asylum seekers from attempting the journey to Australia by boat, by exposing people to cruel and intolerable conditions offshore. There are no exemptions for children or other vulnerable groups. Between 2012 and 2014, just over 4,000 people were transferred to the remote Pacific islands of Nauru and Manus Island in Papua New Guinea. At the start of 2022, about 230 of these people were still offshore, while more than 1,200 had been medically evacuated back to Australia. Almost a decade after first arriving in Australia, still they wait in limbo for a resolution. Offshore processing was tried and abolished in the early 2000s, then revived by Prime Minister Julia Gillard in August 2012. A later policy change by Prime Minister Kevin Rudd in July 2013 meant that refugees transferred offshore became barred from ever settling in Australia. Offshore processing and the ban on settlement in Australia continued under subsequent governments. But in late 2013, Australia began pivoting away from offshore processing in favour of a new boat turnback policy called Operation Sovereign Borders. Offshore processing was intended to stop the boats, save lives at sea, and break the so-called business model of people smugglers. In practice, it did none of these things. Instead, more asylum seekers arrived by boat in the first year of offshore processing than ever before. Smuggling continued, as did deaths at sea. In light of these policy failures, Australia stopped transferring new arrivals offshore in 2014, and instead focused on turning all asylum seekers back at sea without ever allowing them to access a fair asylum system either in Australia or offshore. Offshore processing is profoundly destructive to the physical and mental health of people subjected to it. Babies and children have been exposed to extreme levels of violence, abuse and trauma. Children as young as five have tried to kill themselves and paediatricians say children transferred offshore are among the most traumatised they have ever seen. Women and girls have been raped and sexually assaulted, then denied appropriate medical treatment and exposed to repeated attacks when Australia refused to remove them from unsafe environments. Families have been deliberately separated as a matter of government policy, including spouses separated and children forced apart from their parents. Pregnant and nursing women have been forced into grossly inadequate conditions to prove that vulnerable cases will not be granted exemption. Men who fled persecution on the basis of sexual orientation were sent to Papua New Guinea, where consensual same-sex acts between men were criminalised. People with complex health needs and disabilities were sent to remote locations with inadequate health services. People died as a result of preventable injuries and illnesses. Every expert UN body to review Australia's offshore processing policy since 2012 has expressed concern that they violate international law. Australia has even been referred six times to the International Criminal Court for Crimes Against Humanity. Australia has no binding human rights legal framework and has not transposed its international obligations into domestic law, so it has been difficult to challenge the policy on human rights grounds in Australian courts. But Australia has been forced to defend a continuous series of cases challenging offshore processing on other legal grounds, leading to huge financial penalties for the government. In addition to the costs of defending and settling these legal challenges, offshore processing has cost Australia, at a conservative estimate, at least one billion Australian dollars per year. Even in financial year 2022, with only around 200 people left offshore, the policy is expected to cost more than 800 million dollars. According to some estimates, offshore processing will now cost Australia 4.3 million dollars per person per year. Offshore processing has been costly, difficult and damaging and did not stop asylum seekers from coming to Australia by boat. For an effective and humane asylum policy, cruelty and deterrence should give way to evidence-based solutions focused on protection, fairness and equality.